مُؤْمِنًا قِيَامًا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome to this new episode of our values And today's value that we will talk about today's topic is a very essential topic in Islam. A lot of the non-Muslim nations may share it, but nowadays being influenced by materialism, it is not that practiced among a lot of the population on earth. The topic we will discuss is connecting the ties of kinship. In Arabic it's known as Silatul Rahim. And this is not something to be taken lightly. It is part of the core of our religion, of Islam. You see, if you go to the East, when you see the people in Japan, in China, in uh, um, other cultures, you'll find that they have this strong bond between one another. First cousin, second cousin, third cousin. Their obedience to their parents is unmatched. Because this helps strengthen the bonds within the community itself. And whenever you have a community that is strongly bonded, it is difficult to overcome and to conquer. When you go to the West, to Europe, to the US, you find this much relaxed, if any. A child may leave his parents' house when he's 16. And it can go for decades without him checking out on them, let alone to know his uncles and aunts and cousins. They don't pay attention to that. In Islam, it makes connecting to your kinship part of your religion. It is so important that Allah Azza wa Jal even associated it with the most important thing in Islam, and that is Tawheed. The oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal in His beautiful names and attributes, in His Lordship and in His worship. So Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, worship Allah and associate nothing with Him. And to parents do good and to relatives. So you must do good to your parents and to your relatives as well. And connecting your kinship is not something that is like anything else, like giving charity, like um, uh, being kind to people, like not being abusive. All of these are part of Islam, but connecting the ties of kinship is part of the fundamentals of Islam. See, when you portray Islam, you have to have a good presentation. And in every single presentation, connecting the ties of kinship come at the top five or the top ten. Jafar ibn Abi Talib, may Allah have mercy upon him, when he did the first migration to Abyssinia and the ruler of Abyssinia heard a complaint against them. So he asked the Muslims to come and present their case because he was fair and just. He would not rule without hearing from the accused. So Ja'far went to him 
and gave him a presentation in a nutshell about what Islam is. And among the words he said, he said that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent to us a prophet from among us whom we know his lineage, his truth. We know his honesty. We know his, he is trustworthy. And he called us to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone and leave everything else that we used to worship such as rocks and trees. And he ordered us to be truthful when talking and to give the pledges and fulfill the pledges that we have made and to give back what we were entrusted with and to connect the ties of kinship. So this is part of the presentation. Abu Sufyan, when he was an idol worshiper, he was asked by the ruler of the Byzantians, Heraclius, and he told him, what does he tell you to do? So Abu Sufyan, who was a mushrik, could not say anything but the truth. And he said, he orders us to worship Allah alone and not to associate others with him. And he orders us to pray, to give the poor due, to be honest, to be chaste, and to connect the ties of kinship. This concept of tying the kin uh, uh, ties of kinship is not something trivial. It is part of the branches of Iman, 70 plus, 60 plus branches. One of them is to tie your kinship. You have to connect to them. The Prophet says, والسلام, whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment must tie his kinship, must, must, must connect to his kinship. And the threat and warning is there. Allah says, whoever connects kinship, I will connect to him. And whoever severs it, I will sever him. Who is Allah saying this to? Allah Azza wa Jal is saying this to kinship itself. When Allah first created it, it sought refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from people severing it. So Allah gave her this pledge. Connecting your ties of kinship is a reason for being successful for Allah's repentance to be upon you, for forgiveness of sins, from being saved from hellfire. So it is one of the greatest good deeds that an individual can do. A man came once to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have performed a major sin, and he did not disclose it. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, do you have a mother? And the man said, no. Then the prophet said, do you have an aunt, sister of your mother? And the man said, yes. So the prophet told him to be dutiful to her. And in this hadith, we understand that in order to be forgiven and to attain Allah's repentance, you must connect to your kinship. And this is one of the means of forgiveness. Not only that, if you connect to your ties of kinship, this will lead you to Jannah. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, tell me about something. If I do it, I will enter Jannah. The Prophet said, والسلام, worship Allah, do not associate others with. Establish Salat, give Zakat, the poor do, and connect to your kinship. And this is the first thing that the Prophet said والسلام, when he came to Medina, O oh people, feed the food, meaning offer the food, and spread peace, salamu alaikum, the greeting, and pray when people are asleep at night and connect to your kinships, you will enter Jannah in peace. 
Also, connecting your kinship has merits and benefits in this life, not only on the day of judgment. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, whoever wants Allah to expand in his provisions and postpone and prolong his lifespan, he should connect to his kinship. Subhanallah. And the Prophet says in a beautiful hadith that the fastest rewarded good deeds are connecting or is connecting your kinship. Once you do this, Allah rewards you on the spot, not only delayed to the day of judgment. How is that? The Prophet goes on to say, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the household, a family, would be sinful. Yet, Allah Azza wa Jal expands their provisions. Allah Azza wa Jal makes their wealth grow and multiplies them in numbers, providing that they connect to one another. We have a short break. Stay tuned, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Among the benefits of connecting your, to your kinship is that you get double reward when you're kind to your kinship. So you pay a stranger a charity, it's one reward. You pay a relative a charity, you get double the rewards. And the best of rewards you would get when your kinship hates you and has enmity to you, yet you're kind to him, then this is the highest and best of all types of charity. Even if he is not a Muslim, Islam tells you, if he's an idol worshiper, if he is a Jew or a Christian, you must be kind to him because he is your kinship. And it is indeed a reason to have friendship, compassion, and love in the community. When you start to connect to your cousins and uncles and uh, uh, all those who are related to you. There is a lot of serious warnings in Islam towards severing your kinship. The most prominent would be that the Prophet said, والسلام, a person who severs his kinship will not enter paradise. لا يدخل الجنة قاطع. And this is serious stuff. Despite your prayers, your fasting, being kind to people, if you sever your kinship, you face the threat of not entering paradise. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal would sever you. Allah would cut you, he would not give you, he would not have mercy upon you, which is saying you cannot live and exist without. Those who sever their kinship are cursed by Allah Azza wa Jal, and they cause corruption on earth. Allah the Almighty says, so would you perhaps, if you turned away, cause corruption on earth and sever your ties of relationship? Those who do so are the ones that Allah has cursed, so He defend them, uh, uh, deafened them, and blinded their vision. And this is a real and serious warning. Now, this curse is on the Day of Judgment, and people without certainty, without real conviction and belief, would shrug their shoulders and say, who knows what will happen? But the threat is even here on earth while we are alive. The Prophet said, that, said that there is no sin worthy for Allah Azza wa Jal to hasten the punishment of the sinner with what is stored for the sinner on the Day of Judgment, there's no sin worthy of 
being punished in this life more than transgression and arrogance and severing the ties of kinship. Those who sever the ties of kinship may ask Allah, may make dua, but Allah Azza wa Jal does not listen to that dua and does not respond to it. As the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah will continue to answer his servant's dua as long as he does not make dua in sin or in severing kinship. The good deeds that you do, if you do not connect to your kinship, may be wasted. The Prophet said, والسلام, every Thursday, the night of a Friday, meaning after the sunset of a Thursday, this is the night of a Friday, deeds of the sons of Adam are displayed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah does not accept the deeds of a person who severs his kinship. And if you look deep in the Sharia, you'll find that there are certain rules that were placed simply to maintain and preserve kinship. For example, you're not allowed to marry a woman and her aunt or a woman and her Sister, combining between the two at the same time causes them to sever their kinship because each one is a co-wife. So usually they fight. So you cannot marry two sisters, two siblings, nor a woman and her aunt. Likewise, Islam prohibits that you make a will and then you transgress in this will because after you die, the children, the offspring, the relatives would have enmity because of your transgression in writing that will. Being fair between your offspring, giving this one similar gift to that one. If you don't, this would sever kinship between them because it, it would cause enmity and hatred. Without doubt, the whole Ummah, the whole Muslim nation, acknowledge the fact that connecting the kinship is mandatory, severing it is totally prohibited. But who are the kinship that we must connect to? Scholars say everyone or anyone related to you from your father's side or your mother's side. And this means a lot. There are a number of other different opinions but this is the most authentic anyone related to me through my father or through my mother they're considered to be my kinship however they vary in their relationship to me so my father and mother are definitely closer to me than my grandfather and grandmother and they are closer to me than my siblings, my parents, are closer to me than my siblings. And my children are closer to me than my siblings. My siblings are closer to me than my cousins. And so on. It goes on and on expanding. And this is why to be able to connect your kinship, each one differs. So my communication with my cousin definitely is not as frequent as my communication to my brother or my kindness to my uh, uh, brother is not equivalent to my kindness to my cousins or uh, second cousins or etc. So the closer the person is to you, the more frequent you have to connect to, you have to be kind to, but what is connecting the ties of kinship? What defines it? Scholars say that connecting is the opposite of severing. And they say that there are three types of connecting. So one of the type is the lowest, 
when you sever your kinship. You're not kind, you don't call, you don't return visits. You simply discommunicate with them. And this person is in hell. He has committed the major sin. The second type is someone who's a little bit better. And he's the person who does not reciprocate unless you make the initiative. So a visit for a visit, a gift for a gift. And this is something we often hear, our spouses, our relatives, oh, I have to buy a, a, a gift to our cousin. Why? Because when I had a child last year, they brought us a gift. So now they have a child, they're blessed with a child, so I have to buy them a gift. So it's a gift in return of a gift. I have to visit my uncle. Why? Because they visited us last week. A visit in exchange of a visit. And the Prophet ﷺ stated clearly that this is not part of the connection that Allah Azza wa Jal demands. The Prophet said, ﷺ, the one who maintains a relationship with his relatives only because they maintain a relationship with him is not truly upholding the ties of kinship. The one who truly upholds the ties is the one who does so even if they break off the relationship. And this is very difficult nowadays. People cannot get over their ego, their pride. And they say, I called my cousin five times and he never replies, he never picks up the phone. So why should I continue? I'm not going to talk to him. Wallahi, there are cousins of mine that I've been calling for years without a response from their side. Not that I've done anything wrong, but this is how they are. I give them calls. I send them SMSs. I try my level best, but without any result. Who cares? Am I doing it for him? Or am I doing it for Allah Azza wa Jal? Until the day of judgment, even if he does not reply, I'm going to continue because this is a form of worship. I could care less whether he calls back or not, or he reciprocates or not. I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. I want the reward from Allah on the day of judgment, and I want provision in this life and to have my uh, lifespan expanded because of this. And this teaches us a very important lesson that we must remain steadfast. The Prophet said والسلام, to a man who came to him and he complained. The man said, O Prophet of Allah, I have relatives with whom I try to keep in touch, but they cut me off. I treat them well, but they abuse me. I'm patient and kind towards them, but they insult me. Imagine, who among us would do this? Wallah, uh, the, the vast majority, if your brother does this to you, you'll cut him off for years and years. This is not Islam. Listen to what Islam tells you to do. The Prophet said to him, alayhi salatu wasalam, if you are as you say, then it is as if you are putting hot ash in their mouths. Allah will continue to support you as long as you continue to do that. Do not give up. Allah will appoint an angel to defend you, to support you, to be with you as long as you're doing what you are doing. So again, it is important that you know that you have to connect to your kinship. One says, how do I connect to my kinship? By doing whatever you can to be kind to them. And this can be a phone call. This can be sending them a gift. This can be by visiting them occasionally. This can greatly be by paying off their debts helping them financially. Wallahi, it is a shame to see brothers who are 
billionaires while their own siblings beg. I know people who have millions and millions and their brother gets peanuts working for others and when you tell him Achi, why don't you help your brother get him married why don't you help him stand on his feet give him a salary he said no I want him to depend on himself the brother will live and die poor deserving of having zakat money and he will not learn it is very sad to see people having great expectations of others who cannot deliver. I was talking once with a brother who was so angry about how his driver behaved and did not understand the message and failed to make the right order from the restaurant. And I was telling this brother, Achi, be realistic. With the pay you're giving this driver and with his job description, it cannot be you're expecting him to be as intelligent as a, as a CEO, CEO or as a supervisor or as a, as a manager. He's a driver. This is his ability. So you have to talk to people according to their minds. Therefore, you, if you want Allah to be happy with you, if you want to be a true Muslim, who has gained and attained the branches of Iman, if you want provision in this life and a good life and you want the greatest rewards on the Day of Judgment, you have no other choice but to connect to your kinship. And if you don't, you will suffer greatly in this life and in the hereafter. People say we've connect disconnected and severed our kinship and we're not suffering. Wallahi, you're suffering. Allah has taken the barakah, the blessings from your life, from your wealth, from your time, from your offspring, from your work, but you are so negligent, you do not know it and you do not notice it. <laughs> وما كان من المشركين